Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with State of the Art Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. This video is going to be about zonulin and leaky gut syndrome. <clears throat> but let's go back and do some review before we get there. A recent video that, that we did was on haptoglobin 2-2. Um, <clears throat> just to do some reminders on that because it got fairly technical. Haptoglobin is a molecule that takes worn out and broken hemoglobin. When the red cell breaks, spills hemoglobin into the bloodstream, the hemoglobin is oxidized and that can cause rusting or inflammation in the, in the cells. Uh, haptoglobin 2,2 has a unique um, molecular distribution or, or geometry which makes it ineffective. Now who cares about all of that? Well, uh, diabetics do. It is the major cause of uh, risk for heart attack and stroke prevention for diabetics. You remember this is the normal haptoglobin 1,1. This is HAP1-2, so they have a 2 from their mom and a 1 from their dad or vice versa. And this is HAP2-2, haptoglobin 2-2, with these curlicule molecules that are very ineffective at cleaning up broken, worn out, uh, spilled hemoglobin with the iron oxidized iron molecule. So you remember we talked about risk for these diabetics. And here was the line, HAP22, haptoglobin 22. These patients, every time a patient in the HAP22 population had an event, the line goes down again. So you can see they added up a lot more events than HAP11 or HAP12. But again, remember there's there's the good side to this, and that's right here. Just taking vitamin E, 400 international units, decreased the vast majority of that extra risk for these diabetics. Oh, and by the way, you do need to keep your diabetes under control. This was for diabetics with a hemoglobin A1C under 6.5. <clears throat> now remember this uh, haptoglobin was discovered uh, and proposed by a fellow named uh, Alessio Fasano. He started off in a small um, research office in uh, the University of Maryland. When I first heard about leaky gut, I thought that was, I sort of, I was a little bit skeptical, actually a lot skeptical. I was sure that somebody made that up on a theory. Uh, however, I, like many other scientists and many other people in the public, uh, was found to be wrong. Uh, we have gone on to, uh, to find out a lot about haptoglobin, even including where it's located on the gene, and also association with many inflammatory diseases, ranging from Hashimoto's thyroiditis to ulcerative colitis, even to some mental health issues. Now, why do I keep talking about haptoglobin when this video is supposed to be on zonulin? <clears throat> Zonulin is the precursor molecule for haptoglobin 2,2. So what is zonulin? Well, and again, that's why I've been talking about leaky gut. Here's the issue. <clears throat> zonulin has been found to be the, uh, again, precursor molecule for haptoglobin 2,2. That molecule has a negative impact on tight junctions between cells. Well, if, if you're disrupting the tight junctions between cells in the gut, then you're letting a lot of inflammatory uh, processes in between the cells. If that's happening in the thyroid, you're uh, letting inflammatory uh, molecules and processes in the uh, thyroid. So, and on and on it goes. So, <clears throat> if you break down, and it just makes sense when you think about it, if you break down the uh, barriers and you start mi allowing mixing with uh, oxidized iron, with other oxidation uh, products, then you can get what's called uh, inflammation. <clears throat> so 
Why, again, why am I talking about that? I thought, uh, or at least it sounded originally like this was just an issue. Heptoglobin 2.2 was just an issue for diabetics. Well, not so fast. Even if you're not diabetic, this problem with inflammation uh, and zonulin can be a big deal. All those things that I, all those inflammatory diseases that I mentioned and uh, many more, you don't have to have diabetes to have Hashimoto's thi uh, thyroiditis associated with haptoglobin and zonulin. You don't have to have uh, diabetes to have ulcerative colitis associated with zonulin or, the, again, these other inflammatory diseases. So <clears throat> we, what can you do? Well, one thing you can do is avoid gluten. Again, another big fad. Uh, I myself thought there was not a lot of science behind it until I started looking. And yes, there is. Here's uh, the, the gluten gliadin molecule. It's a protein, and gluten is what provides that spongy uh, air pockets consistency to bread. So if you have gluten-free bread, it's not going to be spongy like uh, like other breads. That's why I, uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like gluten-free bread or pasta. <clears throat> it gets a little bit deeper in terms of showing the actual molecular mechanism. Basically what happens is uh, the gluten and gliadin hit receptors on the cell membrane. Those receptors trigger development and release of the um, zonulin molecule. That's released and then you have disruption of these tight junctions between cells and guess what? All this stuff that was in the gut therefore can start getting into um, the gut tissue resulting in inflammation. That doesn't happen, as, as I said, it doesn't happen just in the gut, it happens in other tissues of the body as well. So. What can you do overall if you've got HAP2 too? Well, if you're a diabetic, as we said before, you want to keep your diabetes under control and take vitamin uh, E, 400 international units uh, daily. If, you're, if you've got HAP2 too and you don't have uh, diabetes, you still want to have at least a gluten-free diet. Do the things you can to decrease inflammation in your body tissues. Thank you.